Hello, can you hear me? That's great, because I'm going to talk to you about hearing today and why we should love it as much as our vision. I have to admit that I have no strong connection to sound. I, I'm not very, very deeply rooted there. When maybe my, my Adele quote of Hello Can You Hear Me was the, as musical as I get. Uh, my brother and sister, um, they were not really great at playing their instruments, so my parents, they spared me of, of teaching me an instrument, instrument that wasn't that bad because I had time to follow my other passions. I really loved building things, experimenting, um, solving problems. And at that, I relied more on my sense of vision and my sense of touch. So still today, I really like it when things are tangible. And that's why I today kind of do draw comparisons between vision and hearing to make it more graspable for you. So yeah, I wasn't really that interested in hearing. I, I didn't really care about my hearing. I just used it as a sense. So how did I get into this? Four years ago, I was working in, at Atlantic Labs, a Berlin-based company builder. And I was with my, with my engineering background and human-centered design background, I was looking for a problem to solve and a human need to fulfill. And around the same time, I was having a repeated conversation with my father, who, by the way, was born here in Poznan. Um, and it went somewhat like this, this conversation. Hey, Dad, I think your hearing is not so great anymore. Please have it checked. Yeah, I will do it next week. Then when I came back three months later, asking how it was, he said, yeah, I will do it next week. Three months later, I will do it next week. So I really myself felt how hard it is to get a loved one to take care of their hearing. And with many startup ideas today, I always think, what's the problem they're solving and why is that important? But with that, with hearing, one of the five basic senses, I thought this is really worth pursuing. There are 650 million people worldwide who suffer of hearing loss, and only one out of 40 who could benefit from a hearing aid has one so far. Why is that? We see kind of two main reasons. On the one hand, hearing care is not very accessible. It's expensive, takes a lot of appointments, so people rather procrastinate, and it's highly stigmatized. We only know hearing aids from our grandparents and people trying to hide these flesh-colored devices. Um, so that's why I then founded Mimi, uh, which, by the way, is also running on Holacracy, uh, which Eva just told you about. And um, we started tackling this problem of accessibility first. So we built a smartphone-based uh, hearing test that people can download and take in the comfort of their home. They don't have to make appointments. They don't have to tell others that they might have hearing loss. They can just secretly do it. And uh, so 500,000 people now tested their hearing with this test, amongst them my father. And as it turned out, his hearing is in a, in a range where he could benefit from a hearing aid, but he doesn't need to get one yet. So, of course, the, it's, it showed up the stigma again. So he, ch of course, doesn't choose to get a hearing aid yet, but rather waits. So we were back to ground zero and tackling the stigma problem. To understand the stigma around hearing loss, I think we have to look at how hearing loss works a little bit more. Um, as I told you, I will draw analogies from vision to make it more graspable. In vision, um, kind of it's like one thing that is tested, like how small can something be that you can still read it? In hearing, the same thing as kind of hearing threshold, how quiet can something be that you can still hear it? So I'm gonna play a sound now, which is going from loud to quiet. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand when you hear the sound and take it down when you don't anymore, and then look around the room and see kind of how the people around you hear. Ready? The first hand's going down, I see. <laughs> okay, that is hearing threshold. And it's measured, measured in decibel. And there are different levels. So there is normal, a normal hearing range, so quiet sounds that you can hear. Here's a sound example how somebody hears who has that hearing range. The baby has blue eyes. So then the next level is uh, mild hearing loss. The baby has blue eyes. The next level. The baby has blue eyes. So when it gets harder and harder to understand. The 
baby has blue eyes. Very hard now. So if we compare that to vision, it's kind of losing more and more the details. As you see here, um, in the clouds, like in the, in the one where kind of the contrast is brought up, it's very hard to see the details in the clouds. And this, as stronger this gets, the more you lose. But it, there are other things than just a threshold that can be broken. For example, here, another example. How many colors do you see? Two. Um, yeah, it's actually, the one thing is a gradient from dark cobalt blue to steel blue. And in hearing, this is called kind of frequency resolution. How well can you tell two neighboring frequencies apart? And when we lose, when our frequency resolution gets impaired, it's harder for us to tell the difference between sounds, as here shown with colors. So back to a picture example. Oops. Um, the colors are not so clear anymore, it's getting blurry. Then, here we see clearly uh, blue, red alternating, and the one color stops, the other color starts. And when our temporal resolution is broken, kind of this is not a clear border, but the, it's blurry in time. So in time it is overlapping. Um, so this is, so temporal resolution is our ability to reconstruct the timing of signals. If this broken, um, we cannot really place it in time anymore. Um, if I move this to vision, it's here as you see this picture is a little bit pixelated. So it's not so clear anymore where in space something is placed, and it makes it harder to see what's happening on the picture. But what happens if we combine all of these effects? You see the original, then you see the pixelation, then the blur, and then the increased contrast. Kind of all these things combined make it very hard to pick out that there's actually a house standing at the side of the lake. So it gets tougher and tougher as these problems accumulate. And hearing, a kind of the most crucial part of hearing is extracting con uh, information in speech. Um, if you're not trying to read this, um, it's probably quite exhausting and you could not read a whole book like this. And this is kind of the situation that maybe our grandparents are going through when we're coming for, for a coffee. Like, they can listen for like the first five minutes, but spending a whole afternoon, multiple people talking, it gets very exhausting picking out the information out of this. So this is kind of the stage where we're getting a hearing aid. So when you cannot, even with the miracles of your brain being able to reconstruct this information with half of the letters missing, this is kind of the stage where we're getting a hearing aid. So when our hearing is already quite a bit gone. Um, so if we compare that to vision, it's not like getting glasses, but it's more like getting a guide dog when you're blind. So it's really uh, happening very late. And this also explains the stigma around hearing loss. It's happening very late when you are already quite impaired and a lot of information in the, in the sound space is missing. So, what is the equivalent of glasses to a hearing aid that starts earlier? Hearing is, of course, not only extracting information out of a conversation, as reading is not only extracting text, but if we look at, let's look at a painting, it's not only about seeing maybe that there's a tree standing on a hill, but it's really on catching these fine subtleties, the brush stroke of the artist when we look at a painting. So, what's the equivalent in sound? Of course, it's music. Um, if we look at the music industry, the music industry has put in a lot of effort to improve sound quality. Uh, the artist practices, has, a lot, has very expensive instruments, goes to a great recording studio, great mastering studio. Uh, it's put on, uh, on a very lossless file format. And the fan then is buying very expensive speakers or headphones to really get all these details that the artist puts in to really enjoy that. But if the hearing ability and the last step is not considered, there is something missing. To understand this a little bit more, there is, besides the dimension that I showed you before, there was the kind of the loudness of sound, there's also frequencies. One moment. So the frequencies, they go from low to high, like the keys on a piano. And I'm going to play again a sound which is going from 20 kilohertz to 22 kilohertz. And I would ask you again 
to lift your hand while you hear the sound and take it down when you don't anymore, because yeah, the higher end is what we lose first. So these are the frequencies, and this uh, teenager can hear up to 20,000 kilohertz, and as we age, uh, and there's where speech is happening. So speech is in a very, in a lower, in, on the relatively lower frequencies, and a teenager hears to a very high region. Um, so as we age, our hearing ability goes down, and it's slowly eating into the speech area, so it becomes harder and harder to, under to understand someone. But when we look at music, for example, taking a, a violin, a violin is going up to around 15,000 kilohertz. So the hearing loss is affecting already the details in music. And so if we are listening to an orchestra and not considering our hearing ability, it's like missing out on all these players. They could just stay at home and you would have the same experience. So. Um, so kind of not taking, taking care of this, this last step of hearing ability is, if I compare it again to vision, it's like spending a lot of money on an ultra HD television and then just deciding to not put on your glasses. Uh, so you really don't enjoy what you're paying for then. Um, so what is the equivalent of glasses in hearing, like glasses for the ears? Um, we at Mimi, we call it sound personalization. We... Um, built an algorithm that models the human ear, that can bring those details uh, to, you, to your hearable zone again so that you can enjoy, the, enjoy those details. But we don't believe that we all should start wearing hearing aids now to enjoy the sounds around us. But we are already having devices that we consume our audio with, for example, the smartphone. So we can put this algorithm on the smartphone and we can connect it to the hearing test results so the phone knows how your unique hearing profile is and can adapt to your hearing ability. So we have users who are crying because they haven't heard songs since their childhood like this. We have people who say they're rediscovering their whole music library because they're seeing subtleties they've never heard before. Um, but of course, we're not only... Cons oh, and we have even one guy, he, he likes it so much, he's recording MP3s through our algorithm, saves them, then puts them on an MP3 player to go swimming with. So he's taking all this effort because he loves his music so much more with all these details in. Um, but of course, um, this then really, really lets them enjoy and really feel what the artist put in and really completes this whole journey of sound. So, but it's not only the smartphones that we use to consume audio, it's also headphones, a stereo system, a car. And we're building the technology that in all these places, you can connect it to your hearing profile so that on all these endpoints, you hear the sound as good as possible. I would have loved to give you a demo right now, but it would be similar to giving you my glasses and then asking how you like them. So I really uh, encourage you to try for yourself since it's personalized sound. Um, and really appreciate it. I, I myself said in the beginning that I didn't like sound that much, but now looking back at the last 15 minutes, I, I really got into sound and I'm, I'm way more careful about noise when I'm in a bar or when we were outside in the lobby, how loud it is and or riding on the subway in New York and seeing what that is doing to hearing. So I got way more conscious and appreciating to preserve my hearing. But on the other hand, also, enjoying kind of the quiet details. When I was preparing this talk, um, I was sitting, and sitting in our flat and was listening around. So there was the wind in the trees, birds chirping outside, I heard some water running through the pipes, I even heard some neighbors having sex. So there are a lot of interesting things to discover when you really, when you really listen. Um, so I really encourage you, like now in the next break, maybe you just take a moment and feel the space and really listen what is all the sounds that are going on and what kind of richness the dimension of sound is bringing to your lives? Thank you.